Hey everyone, this is Gary D. Tonico from MoreThanASnapshot.com. Today I want to talk to you about Luminar 4.1. It was recently released, and there of course were a bunch of updates, but the most important three updates I want to talk about today so you can see if this is something that would work for you in your workflow. So down in the description, I'll leave a link to where you can purchase Luminar 4, or if you're already a Luminar 4 owner, you can just simply use the update button within the software to update to 4.1 and you'll get some of these new features. Now somehow I was busy and I months ago I never even made a Luminar 4 update video so I really felt like I wanted to get in and check out 4.1 and I have to tell you you know in Luminar 4 the major update was the sky replacement and I found it to be really impressive. I'm really liking it. It's a lot of fun. And you can really do a lot of things to remix your images. And one of the updates has something to do with an improvement to the Sky Replacement Tool. And we're going to see that now. So let's head over to Luminar and we'll take a look. So here we have an image that has, uh, you know, some mountains and some nice foliage and things like that that, you know, could possibly make a good image. But... The sky is, uh, of course, very white, and there is a bit of haze in the image, and that's why I chose this image, because it is a little bit hazy. And believe it or not, it was a little bit hard finding an image that had some haze in it, but I think this one will work out all right. So right now I have it in Photoshop, and all I have to do is go to um, Skylum and then Luminar 4. It will send it over to Luminar so that I can use the Sky Replacement Tool. All right, once in Luminar 4, I'm going to come over to the Creative tab and then Sky Replacement. And I'm just going to pick a sky. It really doesn't matter that much what sky I choose. I'm going to choose this one that has a lot of blue sky in it. And I think that, you know, without even doing anything, it went in really nicely. Um, I could, of course, zoom in and, and make sure that it matches in the trees and all that kind of stuff, but it really does, and I didn't even have to do anything. So I'm very happy so far with how that's working. Now, the new thing that they added is under advanced settings, and it's called atmospheric haze. And basically it's the opposite of the dehaze slider, because in this case, it's going to add haze. So my sky's a little blue here. It may not completely match what's going on in the mountains, the mountains are a little bit hazy. So if I increase the atmospheric haze, and I'll do it by a lot, now you can see that the sky really looks a lot more like the foreground and it blends in a bit better. Now, of course, I cranked it all the way up so you could really see it, but even if I take it down some, I think overall it makes the effect a bit more realistic. And over here we have a before and after, that's before and that's after. And so, so simple, so powerful. I'm really loving that tool. They also have something else here that could be helpful, and that's the sky temperature and sky uh, exposure. So you could, for example, warm it up a little bit or cool it down a little bit, whatever it takes to match this image. So I think I like it with just a little bit warmer. You can also brighten or darken the sky again, to match whatever's going on with your exposure. Once you have that done, you can just hit apply, and in this case, it'll go back to Photoshop. All right, so that was the first major adjustment, um, the atmospheric haze tool. The next thing that they uh, enhanced is the eraser tool. So if I come over here to the canvas and then to the erase tool, they claim to have improved it with some AI. And um, so in this image, you can see that I have these wires that I think I would not want to have in the image. Say I wanted to erase these wires. What you really should do is zoom in real close and move over to the part where you want to erase. And then I'm going to um, take the eraser tool right now. Size 20 looks like it would be all right. And if I paint over the line, you know, you would want to take your time, maybe do it in short sections, stuff like that, and then click erase. 
and it's gone. And it seems to have replaced the pixels really well. I'm really impressed with how it blended in. Here I am, I can't draw a straight line, so maybe that's why it's better to do it in short verse. Let's see how that comes out. Really good, really perfect. Okay, so maybe that was easy though with it being on a background like this. Let's see where it gets a little bit tougher when we have some more other details here. So I'll try to zoom in a little bit more. All right, let's try to erase it when it is on the building. Okay, that did a pretty good job. It did make a small mistake up there, but overall, really good. Let's try this section where the molding has some texture. Perfect, that was really nice. There's a little spot in the shade or in the dark area. All right, really good. And then coming out of this shady area, we'll do that section. And that's great. Look, look at what a nice job it did there. All right, one more tough spot here. We'll go through this window, all right? So I'll do this little shadowy area first. Good. And then through the window, because there's crossbars, I would think that that would be a little bit challenging. And it did really good. And we'll get this final piece here. See, doing a big chunk like this might be a mistake. You're supposed to do it in small sections, but just for the heck of it, I'll try it. Let's see if it'll erase that big section. And it did, it would need a little bit of cleanup, but not bad. I think that this tool works really well and so far I'm impressed with it. So that's update number two, a better erase tool. All right, so let's finish that later. All right, so the final improvement to Luminar 4 has to do with improving portraits that have more than one face in them. So we know that when we have a portrait with one face, you can use the uh, portrait enhancer and all of these adjustments will affect the face and probably the easier one to see is the face light. But now supposedly, the software is supposed to be able to look for multiple faces and smaller faces within the frame. So here we have four faces. And of course, because it's a wider shot, these faces are smaller in the frame. So let's see if the software can find the faces and make an adjustment. So if I use face light and if I crank it way up, oh, it's not finding the four faces in this picture. Probably because they're at an angle, maybe because they go away from center. All right, so if I use face light, it should apply to all the faces. And here you can see it in this case is just applying to the first face. So I don't know if it's the angle that they're at or whatever, but in this case, it is not working. So let me try a different image. Okay, here in this portrait, we have the same people in a different angle. And when I try face light, you can see that it is finding three of the people. So in this one, it is working maybe because the shot's a little bit tighter, although it's not working on the woman in blue, probably because we don't see very much of her face. But it is working, just not completely on every image. Granted, these may be at a tough angle, but uh, I think it is a nice improvement for you know, anytime where you have small group shots, you can make enhancements to all the people all at once. So this has been the update to Luminar 4.1. As I said, I will put a link down in the description if you have not bought Luminar 4 yet. 
you need to buy it before you can get to Luminar 4.1. And if you use the coupon code snapshot, you can get a discount whenever they are not running a sale. If they happen to be running a sale, their sale takes precedence first. And if you already have Luminar 4, you can just do the update here on the Windows side anyway. You can just go to help, check for updates, and it will update to 4.1. So I hope that helps and we'll see you in the next one.